Hey, take one. Algebra talk. Okay, no, I, I will edit that out. I'm just kidding. I'm such a ham. No, no, I have raw footage. Okay. we do number talks we start everyone starts with fist to chest so everyone put their fist up here that way no one can really see if you have a strategy or not just me and you will know that and I'm gonna be looking for your finger out when you have a strategy to solve it okay so we've been learning about equations and we've been representing equations with tape diagrams we've been matching them yesterday at the end of our lesson you created tape diagrams and today we're gonna to explore that a little further this Algebra Talk is going to help us with that. Okay. Find a solution to each equation is your goal today. And now we're going to start off like this. I know that looks pretty elementary to you. Remember, a solution is a value for the variable that would make the equation true. I'm trying to get you away from thinking about answer and how an answer is always on the right side of the equal sign. I want you to think about solution and how it makes an equation true. So put your finger out when you have an idea and tell me how you know. OK, Lucy. OK, you did 5 minus. So what's the solution to x? x is 4 because 5 minus 1 equals 4. Right, excellent. Let's do one, two, three, clap. One, two, three. Is there somebody that got the same solution but did it differently? Charlie. I used, uh, I just said, what's three plus one equals four? So four plus one must equal five. Three plus one is four, so four plus one is five. Excellent. Anyone else have another strategy? I just did a number line. Oh, great. Okay, tell me more about that. So you start off as on the number line. You start out at zero on the left side, and then one. How far do you want me to go? Five. Okay. So one is the five is the answer, and one is the solution that you already know. Like one of the numbers. So, so were you is, looking at between these two points? Yeah. And then? So I, so I said in my mind, how far between are they? So how far in between are they? What is the distance between them? Mm -hmm. That's excellent. And you came up with? Four. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one. Great job. Two times the quantity x plus one equals ten. Fist to chest. Everyone start off the same. Fist to chest. Okay, I'm gonna start with Alexandra. What is the solution that would make this equation true? Okay, I'm gonna put it over this way. X equals four. Why? Ten divided by two equals five. And 5 minus 1 is 4, and that was your ending point. Excellent. 1, 2, 3. Did I forget a 1, 2, 3 clap for somebody else that participated before? Okay. For Evan, 1, 2, 3. So sorry. We value you as well. Okay. Somebody have another way that they got the solution that's a little bit different. Or restate what Alexandra did in a different way. Ashley. 4 plus 1 equals 5. So you were looking at this part in here? Okay. And then you confirm that 5 times 2 equals 10. Okay, 1, 2, 3. Anybody else have another way? Yeah, Kaden. Well, I kind of used the first problem. So I said. Okay, so you use something in here? Yeah. Okay. I said, for first, I took that what said that 2. So your first step was to know that 2 times 5 is 10. Yeah. 
and then you were looking at the 5 and you're thinking the x plus 1 has to make 5? That's excellent. I love how you referred back to an earlier problem. One, two, three, great job. Okay, we're going to move on. Three times the quantity x plus one equals 15. Fist to chest. I'm hearing some mutterings. Um, x is four and four plus one is five. Okay, I'm just going to repeat. You said x is 4 because 4 plus 1 equals 5 and then 3 times 5 is 15. Excellent. 1, 2, 3. I heard some people muttering too. It's the same thing. Is that being said over there? It's the same thing. Okay, does somebody have another path to this solution? Julia. Um, I did 15 divided by 3 and I got 15 divided by 3 equals 5. And I know that 5 minus 1 equals 4. And again, 5 minus 1 equals 4 because you just know that fact, and we've done it a few times here. Okay, 1, 2, 3. Another one. Okay, Kendall? Um, I remember yesterday um, you explained it by like, multiplying 3 times 1. Like, okay. Like, so I did 3 times 1 and then that equals 3. Okay, I'm going to grab another color for you. So you did the distributive property. Yeah. You might not remember the name of it. And so you did 3 times 1. Which equals 3. And then I 3 what? Three. Oh, you did 3 times yeah. 1 over here? Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. 3 times 1 is 3. And then I subtracted 3 from 15. Okay, and then 15 minus 3 equals 12. 12. And then 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Awesome. Did you guys follow her reasoning? So you didn't really deal with the 3 times the x part, but you knew you had to deal with that later down here. Yeah. So you did the 3 times the 1, then subtracted that, and then dealt with that 3 times the x by undoing it by dividing. Did we cut for you yet? 1, 2, 3. Wow. Okay. I'm going to go on to the next one. 500 equals 100 times the quantity x plus 1. You guys are doing fantastic thinking. Ashley. Okay, you said x equals 4. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. 4 plus 1 equals 5. Five times one hundred is five hundred. One, two, three. Anybody else have the same solution and could either restate her reasoning or tell me a different path to that solution? Kate. Um. So um, I um, I I I bleh, I just realized that there's a that there was a pattern. Okay, so you saw a pattern. Tell me about the pattern. That x was always four. X has always been 4 in all the other problems. Yep. Yeah. So I just knew that X was 4 because it's a pattern. So you assumed that X is going to be 4 again? Yeah. Okay. So you just replace the X with the 4? Yeah. And check to see if it balanced? Mm -hmm. So you did 100 times 4 plus 1, which is 100 times 5. Yes. Okay. Excellent. One, two, three. Anybody have another way, a different way to explain the same thing? Yes? Um, I kind of thought about it as um, I know that 100 or 500 is times 5 is multiplied by 5. Okay, so does this capture your thinking? Going from 100 to 500, we multiply by 5. Five minus one is four. Excellent. That, that's great. That's what I want to know. I want to know all the different pathways to get to these solutions. One, two, three. Okay, today we're going to continue on our journey with tape diagrams and equations. And you notice we have the distributive property. We're going to encounter that again today. 
And we're going to discover that maybe a tape diagram isn't always the most efficient way. And that's going to force us to go to that next deeper level as by the end of this lesson. Ready to get started? Go ahead and put your notes in Notability. Wow. I still get really excited when I watch that playback because number one, I recorded that day not knowing what our number talk would end up like. I didn't know it would be such a fruitful discussion. At the beginning of the year, I don't think that many students would have participated and told so many different responses. I loved looking at the board. I wanted to take a picture. I remember running over to get my phone to take a picture of it at the end because it really shows all the different ways that students are willing to find a path to a solution. They use number lines, some of them use look inside method, divide first, distributive property. They were looking for patterns. I am just so proud of the progress we've made this year. And it's definitely due to this inquiry-based math that we're doing, open up resources, 6-8 math. This was seventh grade. It's my sixth grade advanced students who do the seventh grade curriculum. And it was unit six, lesson four. Thank you so much for watching this video. Go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And I'd love for you to write in the comments below what other instructional routines you would like to see me record and reflect and show on my channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at The Math Reflective. Those links are in the description below. And as always, I will be helping myself and others to maximize student and professional potential by thinking deeply about math and how we teach. Are you ready for more?